Hello everyone, my name is Chuck. You're watching episode 179. Nikki, come here. <laughs> In the last episode, we started placing plants inside the large bowls and pots and you had a lot of things to say. Now let's have a look at the comments. But before we begin, let me just give a shout to my friend Gloria of the Succulent Stop. She makes this very beautiful succulent arrangements and if you are thinking of getting something for Mother's Day, that might be an idea. You could find The Succulent Stop both on Instagram and Facebook under that name. Just search for The Succulent Stop and you'll find her page. There are a bunch of questions that are very similar and this is really nice because this means I could just answer all of them at once in a group and Let's have a look at those. The first one is from Lucky Strike asking, is the soil that you have used in the pots not too organic? It looks like there's more soil than scoria in the big pots. I would be concerned of rot through too much water retention. Christine McPherson says, just thinking that's a very highly organic mix. Do you find it problematic? Have you considered this as a contributing factor to the area remaining wet? And she goes on to list down some uh, common ratios. Beverly Hardy asks, what kind of soil are you using? Now let's take them apart because those are a lot of questions. The first one is, is the soil too organic? Now normally, I go with a very rocky, less organic type of soil. I usually, I remember doing this in, I remember doing this in older videos where I had uh, two thirds would be rocks and one third would be regular garden soil. You know, basically the drainage would be very top notch and that's what I had on my garden bed. But for this scenario, the plants will be in those large clay terracotta pots or bowls and by itself, they do not retain that much water. In addition to that, it's not just going to be one plant inside the pot or bowl, there would be a bunch of other plants. So, you know, I need to help them along by giving them a bit of water retention. So more on so more organic soil this time around. But don't worry for the garden bed outside the pots, it would still be more uh, minerals, more rocks than organics. I'm not sure if I captured it in one of my older videos, but the plot itself used to be uh, very clayey and I had to dig down quite a bit, uh, at least one fourth of a meter, at least 10 centimeters, I guess. And I had to backfill them with soil, but on the gutters around the outside, outside the, the sleepers, I didn't do any soil replacement, which is why that part of the garden would be flooding, while the inside where the plants actually are, the garden beds, they seem to be doing fine. Yeah. From Sandy saying nice editing from the intro to the comment section thank you and I still feel the pain when I saw the plant fall over <laughs> let's see that again from Evelyn Zinower the way you have done the pots is amazing I can't wait to see when it's all finished same here you'll get to see the continuation of that in later in this episode. From Sandra Figueroa, your daughter looks so cute holding the big plant, but she's very strong holding it. <laughs> yeah. She was complaining about it afterwards, saying it was so heavy and don't do it again, daddy. <laughs> oh, man. And we've got a comment here. Apologies, I can't read this name, but they are saying that they are from Korea and they would appreciate if I could add subtitles. Korean. I'll see if I could do that because it takes a lot of uh, effort for me to add subtitles. So it might be something that I could try doing again in the future, but we'll see. Nina comments saying, why don't you just raise the garden bed for drainage and plant it to the ground with a few large rocks for decorations, more like a rockery. It looks more natural. Pots make it look like a granny garden. 
I understand where Nina is coming from because everyone does pots, plant arrangement, you know. And she acknowledges that uh, we all have different tastes and uh, pots have their uses, like say for propagating or if you're in a rental property and do not want to place anything in the ground. But she also believes that if you own your home, you might as well take advantage of it, you know, place the plants in the ground, don't keep everything in pots, and all of that jazz. And my response to that criticism, which is totally fair by the way, that I agree to some extent that pots have their use, and I am not really a pot person, especially if you've been following me from the very beginning. I love planting in the ground, I love making rockeries. But unlike other people, I like using pots as part of the design. Uh, and I tend to go with early types of pots, clay pots, terracotta pots, or concrete pots even. Pots that would tend to look like rocks or blend close to rocks. I do not like brightly colored pots. And the only time I use pots is uh, if I have to transport them somewhere like to a a succulent show, succulent competition, which I've done a few years back. No, never again. <laughs> Lots of effort for that, man. But yeah, I am more into rockeries, and I definitely agree that uh, if you have the space, you know, go for it. Do all of the design on the ground. But this is just my thing. I use both pots and rocks in one cohesive design. I don't make the, you know, I don't show off my collection in just pots. Which is kind of ironic because if you look at my garden right now there's a whole lot of pots in the ground temporary pots mind you but they are there <laughs> and littered all around the area i haven't gotten around to planting them i was supposed to do that for the past year but you know life got in the way and i never got to play around in my garden so hopefully this changes now i am doing a lot of back-to-back -back, um, landscaping work on my garden Hopefully by winter, I have most of the garden beds filled. Natalie Cristini Oliveira says, Thank you for sharing this process with us. Soon I'll be doing some changes in my yard and I'll use your videos as inspiration. I'm so happy to hear that and I hope you do really well with your own landscaping. Now on to the video. With the foundation plants in, I think we can start filling up the gaps. I mentioned that I wanted to use some of these pearls to drape the large bowls. So I'll be gathering some strands from all of these pots and place them on the bowl. What are you doing? I'm giving it a haircut. Because the hair is long. All right. Are they peas? Yeah, they look like peas. After chopping off all of those locks, I now have a tray full of pearl strands. Now my plan is to make the pearls flow down from the top bowl like so. But before I do that, you'll notice that the top bowl has some rocks in it. And I originally wanted those rocks to surround the spiral aloe. But now that it is on the topmost level, I think I should remove those rocks and place it somewhere else. And on the top of that bowl should be my luscious pearly locks. Now that we've got all of this space around the spiral aloe, we could plant in the string of pearls. But before we do that, let me tell you a bit about String of Pearls care. Now, most of you already know that String of Pearls, they usually like protected areas, not too direct sunlight, not too harsh, not too hot, and they would really appreciate a canopy. This fence right here, this is the west border of our property, which means that in the afternoon, the fence casts a shadow down on everything on the ground. And not only that, above the fence is our neighbor's greenhouse, which also casts a shadow in the afternoon, which further reduces the amount of direct sunlight exposure that this spot would have. And of course, we are sitting under my pergola. I have a shade cloth directly above this large bowl that you see here. So I think between the fence 
and the pergola, the string of pearls would have enough protection. Or at least I hope so. Now when planting string of pearls, I know it is very tempting to just lay them out like so and start making them trail. Yes, it means that I get to achieve the look that I want early on. But it would be a lot easier for them to take hold and establish if you lay the whole plant or the whole strand on the soil. That way, all of the nodes that they have would have access to soil and all of the nodes would have the ability to push down roots. And of course, the more roots, the more it is able to uh, gather nutrients from the soil as well as water, which is absolutely needed, especially in an exposed area like this. Drying out would be sort of a death sentence for them. So what we're going to do is instead of just placing them like so and trailing them right away, we're going to plant them around a spiral aloe like so, giving them as much uh, ground coverage as they could get. That way, they would be able to strike earlier, establish faster, and be healthier in the long run. Eventually, when they grow big enough, they would just naturally trail out of the bowl because there's nowhere else for them to crawl but you know, outside. So, as long as we put enough strands in here, given enough time, they would be flowing outwards. So this is not going to be an overnight build, this is going to be a long-term build. Let's go plant some pearls. While I would also recommend not putting too much strands in, I have to put more than usual because Again, this is an exposed area. I want some of the strands to at least protect the lower strands. And having all of these layers means that at least the bottom layers would be definitely well protected. But in reality, I'm not that concerned anyway because we are now in the middle of autumn. We no longer get any of those hot days. In fact, for the past few weeks, the maximum temperature that we've been getting was around 18, 19 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty low. The string of pearls pretty much like lower temperatures and now that we are heading to winter, the string of pearls would be right about in their growing season now. After planting pearls in, I generally like sprinkling some soil on top of them because that would help retain some of the water and at least it means they won't dry out sooner. So let's go do that. And that takes care of the top layer. Now I think I would also like some pearls on the smaller bowls because that way they would trail over with the tiny ledges that they form. And at least the pearls would not cover the specimen etchive area that I placed in there. It also means that design-wise there's a continuity with the flow of the pearls from up here. You could imagine that once grown out, the pearls on top would trail over and go onto the smaller bowls. And then from the smaller bowls, more strands would be trailing out onto the lower level pots. For a bit of variety, I'll be placing other sort of fillers between the pots. We're now done with the pearls, adding a bit of green to the whole thing. Now let's work with other colors. I have pulled out this Echeveria colorata linseana from the ground, no, from the pots. Was it in pots? Yeah, it was in pots. And I want to place it in the ground this time. I have a small clump of them. I am going to separate them just so they would have their own root systems because right now, all of the smaller ones that you see here are pops of the main plant right here. And if I keep it that way, their growth would be stunted because they only have one source of roots. So yeah. Time for them to be independent. Looks like they were all old enough already because the pups have their own root systems. They still have the stem that connects to the parent plant, but otherwise they are, they should be able to grow on their own now. 
So all I have to do is to clean them up, remove all of the dead leaves and plant them in the crevices. It's weekend at last! Yay! Yay! We're happy for the weekend because it's April by the time that you're watching this. And in April, daylight savings time ends here in Australia. Which means that I have an hour less to work on the garden after work during the weekdays. Also, we have a very nice sunny day today. It is also laundry day. <laughs> As you can see behind me so it's a very good weekend overall in the last few days i've been working on my garden after work slightly dark and this is my first time seeing all of these plants together under great light as you can see here i've started filling out the gaps with some plants over at this side you could see a bunch of echeveria colorata mexican giants and right over here these are a bunch of echeveria violet queen then going right here, these are Echeveria colorata linceana. Littered around the gaps in the smaller bowls are a bunch of Sidum rubrotinctum aurora. Also around the bowls are some cuttings of the Graptosidum bronze. And right over here, you could barely see them, these are a bunch of Sedeveria myalen cuttings. And also right at the back are a bunch of Graptopetalum menduse cuttings. And they are directly under the shade cloth for protection. You'll notice that there are gaps between the small cuttings and I purposely done it that way because I am expecting them to fill out the gaps as they grow bigger. The next thing that I would like to do is to fill up all of these large bowls, place more plants around the larger echeveria and this is exactly the reason why I went with a more organic mix because I am expecting to place a lot of plants and by having less of the rocks by volume this means that more water will be retained especially since these are concrete uh, no not concrete but I think they are still clay made out of clay water will just be seeping out of the walls anyway I would at least like the plants to get a bit of water before things start draining and drying out. And now we have to think of the plant selection for our bowls. Given the size of the plants inside the large bowls, and they are different, as well as a different variety of the larger echeveria, some of them are light, some of them are red, and some are purple, we might have to work with a variety of plants. Now for my plant selection, I would like to insert plants that do not tend to grow tall that way they do not take much attention away from the plant in the middle these plants have to be something that would trail or just crawl around they should never be growing vertically and here are some of my options if you know your color theory you would know that green would contrast nicely against red and here's a good example of that that's the echeveria big red echeveria meritu and the echeveria 
black opal being surrounded by the Sedeveria hamelii. I've also been growing a bunch of sempervivums all over this plot here and I think that I could also use this somewhere in there. Something that might also work as fillers would be this Echeveria secunda glauca. As you can see they are bluish green and they would make a nice contrast against the reds and maybe even the blues and maybe even the whites. Earlier on at the start of this project, I was also thinking of including the Graptocidum Francesco Baldi somewhere in there. And I think this, uh, this is a very good plant to use since they tend to trail and just crawl around the landscape. Here's another example showing how they tend to crawl when you give them the space. Something else I would like to use would be this Fidimus Purius Dragon's Blood. Another potential choice would be this Echeveria Prolifica. They tend to grow low and they send out a lot of plants growing on stolons and I think it's rather nice. There are so many other plants that we could use and I'm thinking that instead of just trying to fill up the bowls with one sort of plant, maybe we could think of this as a bowl arrangement project. So without further ado, let's go crazy. And just like that, we have all of the gaps planted in now. Some of you will notice that I haven't done this particular bowl. I'm thinking that I might keep this afterglow bowl this way for now. I kind of like how the Tuscan rocks look like around it. So I'm going to leave this for now. Unless, of course, I change my mind down the line. We'll see. Something I realized while working on this redesign is that I barely made a dent to the trays of plants that I pulled up before I started working on it. And there's still a whole lot of plants left. <laughs> One of my friends reached out asking for a cutting pack. She sent me $100 and I just grabbed random plants in the garden. So this is what I set aside for her. And I'm now thinking that maybe I could post this up for sale. I'm going to keep maybe a few trays for myself for my future uh, redesigns because I plan to do a whole lot more than this. But yeah, there's still a lot of um, Echeverias to go out. And rather than just dumping them or leaving them out to dry and potentially die, maybe some of you would like to get your hands on them. If you're in Australia, maybe we could work something out. I could sell you some of these plants for cheap plus postage and hopefully they do not get held up by the whole pandemic related supply chain problems.
because man i've been ordering stuff for my desktop computer for the past few weeks and almost all of them well all of them without fail have arrived delayed so yeah i i just fear what that means for plants alternatively if you're in melbourne that would be even better maybe you could pick some of these up you know i'll still work out the details but in any case we'll see what happens i'll try to use more of them in the other parts of the garden but i'm pretty sure i won't be able to use all of them we will be working on this but next i haven't thought about what i'd like to do here but i'm pretty sure between your suggestions and the things that i tend to think about during my spare time i'm pretty sure we would be able to come up with something nice so yeah and that's it for this episode if you have any comments or suggestions on what i could do leave them down in the comment section and if you've enjoyed what you've seen here make sure to leave a like on this video subscribe if you want to see what happens next and i'll see you in the next episode bye all right on your mark Go! <laughs>